Where in the world is Chase Master? After three years of searching, the case goes cold, filed away in the archives of the Cobb County Police Department. But there is one person who could shed light on the unsolved mystery, Chase's friend, Brad Clement. As far as I know, I was the last person that spoke with him. Cops interview Clement, but never name him a suspect. Frustrated, Chase's wife and his mother form Team Chase, a group devoted to continuing the search. We had not even the slightest clue in three years. Then a tiny glint of light sparks at the end of a very dark tunnel. Their efforts capture the attention of the national media and Nancy Grace, blowing the case wide open. Something about it strikes a chord in me, and I want to work on it. Now, with Nancy on board, the investigation picks up speed. She and Crime Watch Daily affiliate CBS 46 arrange a dramatic face-to-face -face meeting between Chase's mother and the one person who could know more about what happened to her beloved son. I'm just glad we kind of got to, to meet. At that meeting, Stephanie sits nervously across from Brad, desperate for any information about her missing son. Then Nancy Grace uses an audio recorder to capture the discussion for her podcast. Can I ask you something? Sure. Did he say anything about me? Not really. I think he said he had, he'd like left your house or something for her. He had stayed with me for three days. Mm -hmm. Stephanie wanted to believe Brad, but at that point she was not convinced that he was telling the truth. No clues to Chase's whereabouts come from the meeting. Another roadblock in years of suffering. We have absolutely no answers at all. But then some good news. The case is transferred from the Cobb County Police Department to the DA's cold case unit, where a group of retired detectives take a closer look. I'm excited about that. They'll have more man hours to focus strictly on Chase's case. And it's not long before the cold case unit gets a game-changing tip, pointing in the direction of Brad Clement's former house, where Master was last seen alive. They looked all through the house. They looked in the attic. They looked in the basement. Now, many years later, there's more manpower on the case, in the form of man's best friend. Watch as the canine unit sniffs out areas the police initially overlooked. Based upon the information that we received several years ago, we did not search these areas. This is the first time we've searched it with the dogs. Disappointingly, inside the house, the dogs come up empty. This whole house has been checked with two dogs. Then they reach the backyard. We had two dogs work. They both consistently responded in the same area. And what happens next is a shocker. Watch as canine unit dog Draco frantically sniffs around and then sits down. Draco zeroes in on something buried under the dirt. We were all amazed when those dogs hit on a scent. It doesn't say that Chase was here or something happened here with Chase. It simply tells us that the dogs are indicating to human remain scent. Investigators get a warrant to dig, where they make a chilling discovery. Beneath the deck, under a slab of concrete, in the exact spot where the dog sat, is what's left of a body. I got a phone call. I understood what it meant, but never imagined in my wildest dreams that it would be Chase. But will the autopsy results reveal the grim truth that eluded everyone for all these years? All common sense says that it is, and I believe that it is. I would stake everything on it. With the horrifying discovery, it's time for cops to pay Brad a visit. The lead investigator finds him at his mother's home and tells him they found a body. Brad freaks out, making a frantic call to CBS 46, insisting he's been framed. You're trying to say that someone planted the body there? Well, I, I didn't put it there. I mean, well. I don't know how we get there. It was a big door. But finally, after weeks, the body is identified. It's what everyone knew but didn't want to believe. It was Chase. I always tried to think of where he was or what happened. Never would have thought that he would be in Brad's backyard. 
And now Clement is about to face another meeting with a jail cell. He first agrees to turn himself in, but never shows up. Instead, he makes a run for it. U.S. Marshals and the Fugitive Unit join forces in a multi-agency manhunt as Chase's mother pleads for the public's help to find the man she claims murdered her only son. If you spot him or know any information on his whereabouts, please call 911 immediately. Thank you. On a tip, six days later, cops track down Clement at a local supermarket just a few miles from his mother's house. Officers find Brad in the back of a U-Haul. Apparently, he rented it, didn't take it back in time, and so the U-Haul company notified authorities. When Brad exits the market, U.S. Marshals close in. There's Clement lying on the ground in the pouring rain next to the U-Haul he was living in. He's barefoot with hands cuffed behind his back. For Stephanie, even the arrest does little to ease her pain. Regardless of whether there's been an arrest made, it's not going to bring my chase back. Clement is whisked off to jail and charged with concealing a body. The autopsy results do not reveal how Chase died. In fact, the coroner writes evidence of lethal trauma was not identified in the accessible soft tissues or the skeletal remains. The report also reveals this shocker. Chase had both morphine and meth in his system at the time of his death. Chase's body was found wrapped in a black tarp, and there was packing tape around his chest and legs. Cops are hoping that tape may contain fingerprints that point to Chase's killer. Now, faced with the reality of her son's death, Stephanie gets sick to her stomach when she thinks about her last meeting with Clement. I don't understand the mindset of somebody that would look me in the face and know what he did with my son. Here's Clement at his first court appearance wearing jailhouse blues. He's yet to enter a plea. And as of now, there is no known motive for this killing. And at the very least, the Master family can turn the page on what is a very dark chapter in their lives and remember the man they love. Now it's time to give Chase a proper funeral and begin to move forward in life and remember the 26 happy years that we had with Chase. And reporter Daniel Wilkerson from our Atlanta affiliate CBS 46 is with us now. Daniel, you were one of the last people to talk to Brad Clement before his arrest. Tell us about that conversation. Well, it was the day that the canines hit in the backyard of that home that he owned back in 2014. I had just gotten off from work and he called me at home and he said that an investigator had just come to his house, come to his mother's house, that's where he was living at the time, and had told him about the discovery. Uh, the thing that shocked all of us was the investigator left. They did not make an arrest that day. The cold case unit there got a lot of help from community members. Do we know exactly how they were tipped off that a body might be at that home? It was actually Team Chase. They were comprised of people who were friends of Chase's mother, along with uh, veterans who had served in Iraq with Chase. They got a private K-9 unit. They got the permission from the, the district attorney's cold case unit. And I tell you, I was there when those dogs hit. One hit, and then they brought another independently, and that dog, that second dog hit in the exact place where they would eventually find Chase's body. One of the most confusing parts, Daniel, of all this is what would be the motive here? Well, police have never said that they believe Chase was murdered. Remember, Brad Clement is simply charged with concealing a death. They said there's no doubt that something went terribly wrong the night of the 26th, and they believe that Brad Clement just freaked out and buried Chase's body. Why do you think this story touched such a nerve in this community? Well, I think it was the fact that he just disappeared. I've done a ton of these stories. I know you have. And usually a body turns up at some point. Uh, there was no activity on his debit card. Uh, there was no trace of him. And his wife and mother said all along that they didn't think that Chase would just walk off and leave his daughters. Keep in mind, he had two young daughters. Reporter Daniel Wilkerson from our affiliate CBS 46 in Atlanta, thank you so much. And you can get updates on this case as they happen on our website, CrimeWatchDaily.com. I'm Chris Hansen. If you like this story, make sure you tune in every day to Crime Watch Daily. You can find where the show airs in your city at CrimeWatchDaily.com. Watch it live or record it on your DVR and watch it at night. And to all those criminals out there, remember, we are watching.